Good afternoon, Scott Relatif for you live. Welcome to today's recap. So it is, what say, Tuesday, first day back after the long weekend, first day of September, and now the big boys are home. Everyone was wondering what would they do, as if they weren't doing anything for the past two weeks with, you know, money to put to work and things going on. But anyway, you know, talk is talk. So what happened was today is, you know, the market tried to sell off a bit, especially in the S&P, and the Dow was down, I think, 35 points. But high beta tech all morning was strong. Banks were somewhat strong, and there's still a bid to the market. Definitely um, stock selection, which is always key, was key. <laughs> um, so you had to be in the right place, right time, and in some things coming into today. But there were some things that actually you could have bought intraday and made some money with if you weren't currently involved and you had risk down over the weekend. And, and you, you, know, you moved around for looking for relative strength and whatnot. So I'm just going to get down to it because... Today, unless we were in the exact right eight stocks, felt like a lot stronger of a day versus, you know, the headlines of the market off or mixed, but whatever. Look here at the chart. This is the, the SPX, okay? Believe it or not, I know we've had a big move, which we did, from the, the trend line and from the 1904 low and from the, uh, the igniting bar that digested through the highs, but for the last one, two, three, four, almost five sessions, we've digested, or if just say even the last... Um, almost seven sessions, we've been hovering above, doing work above the prior high of 1991 without falling apart, staying above the eighth day. So to me, this looks, still looks constructive. And you go to the Qs, which has been showing relative strength the majority of the time, it actually closed at you know, new move highs. So with that being said, traders like, or at least I like, and I think most of the T3 community like when tech leads. You go to the, the Russell, what'd that do today? It also, green day when the spiders weren't, so it's still making higher lows, and I know it's not through the highs, but you know what? It's not a headwind right now, and there's opportunity there. And then you had the banks today, which were pretty strong, also closing a little bit up, above, you know, above the highs. So, you know, is what it is. You, you, you got to watch the action, and although you don't need to be all in, you don't need to be all out, and there's lots of things to do. So let's go to some stocks, Andrew, if you want to come back to me, <laughs> uh, that, you know, have been in play stocks. We've been focusing on stocks that's on the red laurel access note stocks that typically move fast. So we're, you know, in the, in the trading business, not in the storing business. So we like to be in stocks that move when they trigger. So anyway, um, let's go to social media first. Twitter has been something that's been on my virtual trade floor, um, you know, pretty much somewhere around here. Today, uh, I also have the options that we had long from here up. I turned the last piece of it into a call spread, sold the 55, so I got buck 50, the Octobers. Besides trading the stock, this stock moved through the earnings high, which we talked about, and I know it took some time. And if you look here, this is a little bit of a, a cup and handle pattern where, uh, you know, gave you a nice relative strength uh, last week when some of the other social medias were weak. But P.S., there you go. It looks good still. You know, no real setup. It looks good. Um, Facebook that got downgraded and blindsided us last week. If you remember on this day, I think I had uh, you know, a big size tier of Facebook. I was cheating, not cheating, but I was like, oh wow, Facebook, or, I mean, Twitter's above this high. Let me be in a lot more Facebook. Uh, it should happen the next day. And then it got downgraded and that happened. Now the old red dog would have been like, oh my goodness, this stock is horrendous. I'm never touching it again. How could they do this to me? They knew I was long this stock. Um, and then it happened to go down again, and then on Friday, I got back in. Okay, I'm like, I looked at it, um, I guess, objectively, if that's the right word, meaning without an opinion, um, and said, okay, you know what, look at this range. It still looks really good. It's still very close to the old uh, earnings per share high. Um, held a 21-day, and it's an opportunity. Plus, it traded and closed above a prior high, so it went long on Friday. First time it's been back on the VTF since this day, I think. And then today, there was an ad when it got strong, when the market pulled in midday, and it didn't. And then look at today's action. Close strong right near this area. And um, sometimes, just so you guys know, um, people say, okay, Red Dog, we know, you know, when CNBC, Patty Don puts you in the blog post, he says, who, you know, Scott Redler, Chief Strategic Officer, who watches the short-term technicals. I like to trade technically from an intermediate basis, and I do throw out some kind of directional calls, just to try and give some conviction to stay with the trade and look. And the day that downgrade happened was I'm like, I would 
venture to say <laughs> that the, the high from earnings day is not the high of the year, just to keep guys on the right track, because that day people will call in double tops, everyone's seeing the, you know, the social media bubble burst, blah, 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 all day long if you were to listen to the media. They had that Facebook analyst on, downgrade, 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 and then P.S., you know, now look at it. So you go back to this chart, and it looks like the book, you know, good book says, just like this day, <laughs> take it home. So I actually have more than I had this day. And hopefully, you know, we, we get paid with the right uh, technique. And if you, you know, have been in Facebook uh, since it came public, you, you know, you maybe built yourself some wealth. Remember this cup and handle pattern? Cup, here's your handle. You could have been in it, accumulating it. When we had a pretty bullish call on it, and I got, you know, beat up by barons and by hate mail saying how could you do it when they put the $15 price target anyway you could have been in it then or you could have been when it ignited above this pattern and then look at the trend it's been in since okay and there's been lots of trades along the way so anyway we'll see what happens if we get some momentum tomorrow that would be nice um, as far as some high beta names uh, Tesla we you know we've been focusing on had it overnight I sold it a, a, you know, a little bit early that happens but overall too you know, we were looking at this spot, and I remember when I bought it uh, vacation time, right, in, on this day, and it didn't work, right? It did not work, and I was like, oh, you know, don't lose sight of it. It's had a big move. Maybe it's just not ready. People aren't home from vacation or whatever it is. Don't lose sight. And then, you know, today you had, or, or Friday, uh, what was no Thursday closed well, got a gap up Friday, and another gap up today. And you know what? Even if you did not own this, okay, overnight, because you don't take the risk, there was an intraday pattern there. Okay, where you gapped up, it pulled in, and then it went. So if you did not long, you know, if you were not long Tesla overnight, it gapped up, held the gap, went sideways. Your trigger could have been right here at 279, and you still could have made four or five bucks trading it intraday. Okay, so um, I know sometimes people don't take risk with stocks like this. That's why I usually take it small. And there was an intraday setup, gap up sideways, went above the high, and then pretty much trended higher all the way to about uh, this uh, 284 before getting choppy again. So there was something there too if you weren't upset that you missed the gap up. You go back to the daily chart, you know, Apple I think, you know, is a little bit, you know, overbought. There's no clear cut pattern, but it's trending real well. I have a call spread on that I just have to sit in now, and uh, I still have a small equity left. I uh, had more coming into today, and you know, I didn't love the way it acted today, so I reduced but I still think it's acting well above the eight day. And look at that, 103. We were talking 100 back then, and you know, now people are talking 120 here. So hopefully you picked some time frame and played it because it's been a, a really nice one. Switching gears to Google. Um, now it looks okay, lagging, but um, it still is very close to historic highs. And um, you know, take this out of the way. Today you sort of had a day one. In the morning note I said maybe it looks like I put a bottom in. And then it cleared this and closed relatively strong. So I don't think it's a momentum trade yet. But um, if you were long a little bit yesterday, maybe you added some today. And now we'll see if it could break this zone. It really doesn't turn on for like a momentum trade until it gets or if it gets above 597. And then you have the highs here. So if you have the risk tolerance, maybe you took a little bit today and you'll see how it goes. Um, Baidu ignited today early on. Hopefully you had it on your radar. Wow. <laughs> you could have missed the first move and got in the second and third and look how it closed. Uh, ever since earnings, it's been lethargic. It's been, you know, grinding to the downside and then bam, on volume. So you take a look here and you put some volume in, some basic studies, and that's what you were looking for. There was no volume in these days to keep it. And this day the volume came in and it went. Now we'll see what happens if it can get above uh, 229. Um, and I think most people that watch this, uh, recap our you know members of my all access which is just means that you get my note every morning that comes out at 8 45 where i usually have 25 to 30 stocks i give if thens on that are on my game plan that could trigger and this is something i didn't have overnight so if you had the luxury of reading the note watching the virtual trade floor you would have seen something that was a good day trade because i don't have it anymore and bought it sold it made some cash flow was prepared and i think people were prepared because you read the note it said if it gets above what was it um what is that 218 ish it could get some kind of good move and look at the move that it happened. So if you bought it and you stayed with it, you did better than I did. I bought it, I think, somewhere around here, okay, after the first move and it started to flag, which was right around here. You know, missed the first igniting move and then I think I sold it into that. And that was, I'm like, okay, or into this. I'm like, that was good, day trade. 
Probably should have had it on in the swing, but I think I had too many things going on. But anyway, whatever. Things to do. If you're not looking for a top and you're not looking for a headline, you could look for stocks with good setups because they do happen. Listen, if the market wants to correct, I'm fine with it. I'll get back to neutral. We'll go below the 821 day. We'll hold below it. I'll try and get maybe a little short, and then I'll see what's next. We did that back in, in the end of July, and you know, in, in August we, we bottomed, and then there was enough uh, patterns and enough data to show us that <laughs> the bears had no control. So at this point, we're day one back in September, and they tried to sell the market, and they really couldn't do it so well. We'll see what happens tomorrow if they're going to blindside us like they blindsided people who were in this TLT trade. Not much you could do about it. If you're in the TLTs and you've been riding it and you've been making a lot of money, congratulations. Nothing you could do about a big gap down like this. You know, it's just, it's just part, of the, part of the game. Unfortunately, I hope if you were in it, you figured out what you want to do. Big gap down, closing the lows. You have an island top right now into the 21 day. I guess it's, 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 it's seen the 50 day and held it. So see how it acts here. So hopefully you know your time frame there. You know, so an island top, you look for the you know, other side of that trade, the TBT is an island bottom. So for those people who've been looking for a TBT trade, and you know, a lot of people have gotten a little chopped up in this whole mess, you now have a gap up that held. And if you want to be long the TBTs, maybe be long versus this now. You have a point of reference. I know we lost a little bit of money here and there, but now you could see and see what happens. If that's the case, banks look okay. Banks, you know, Bank of America played a little catch up today. I got back involved today and we'll see what happens next. You know, you had a nice igniting bar when uh, they announced the settlement and then it held uh, a decent end of it. So we'll see what happens next. Morgan also, you know, you look at this flag pattern, it finally ignited. You know, we traded this one above uh, here and then PS it held above it. And now let's see if we get some follow through. Um, not in Goldman, but Goldman looks pretty good too. Maybe it gets above this 180 tomorrow. Um, as far as gold, I've been talking about how, you know, how random, okay, gold is. I've been talking about how, um, how uh, just random and, and erratic and one day to the next horrendous and it's all overnight. So why be in things like that if you're a trader? I know if you have gazillions working and you want to have 10% in gold, okay, diversify yourself. But, you know, as far as trading it, it's been, to me, everyone was bearish on gold. You had a rally, then everyone got bullish, and it hasn't seen really much of an uptick since. You know, you look at the chart here. Every time it's looked good, it's, uh, <laughs> you know, it's gone the other way. You know, it looked good here, right? Remember, it looked like it was going to break out. Then you had the gap down, okay, and then came off the lows and filled this. Then when it kind of looked uh, like it was going to bear flag here and go lower, Something I don't, all I know is it's been a, a mess, and now it's below all the moving averages and whatever. Um, you could do what you want in gold. I'm, I'm avoiding, and most of it, I think the people in our community are avoiding because just not easy to deal with. As far as um, some bios, you know, I do have options in this that you know are looking like they could go worthless, I guess. Um, but it's a speculative play. That's why I have options in it. I know my risk. I think Sperling got a little hit in it today. It broke a level where some people probably had stops. So if you're sitting in it, maybe you got stopped out and it just, you know, might need time. Um, let's see what did Gil do today. Oh, look at that. Awesome bio, leader, trending higher. Didn't even see that today. Looks good. This little guy, ARWR, you know, looking like maybe, I think data comes out in two weeks, so there's room. It could run into it. A lot of people are expecting some big things. I've been sitting in options that are basically flat. Today I bought a little stock just to be in it because I think tomorrow if it trades through, this 1563, maybe this time gets a better day trade. So we'll see. Um, what else? This, I, this, some of these like camera stocks did well. Oh, you know what was good today? Loco. Loco is where, you know, you had a really nice new issue, came in, got tight and uh, ignited today. Let's hope we get a little follow through tomorrow. G Pro has been a friggin' animal. Okay, I don't know why people like making fun of G Pro. This is a stock that, you know, could be something that can make you a lot of money if you learn how to trade it. And nice little breakout pattern here with follow through. Nothing funny about that. Um, MBLY, I'll put it on my radar because this too had a really nice move starting down here. And now if it were to hold above this price for much longer at some point, it gets going on volume. Maybe I'll jump in. But you know, new stocks that come public within a few months tend to move well. Some of them, you know, become the chosen ones. Kind of like this G Pro became, you know, one of the chosen ones. And uh, all in all, you know, that, that's that's the day. Uh, it's it felt a lot stronger. Like when I was trading, it was like 11 o'clock. The Dow was down 40. I'm like, well, how are we down 40? 
But I guess the casinos, which have been weak, if you're looking for to short something, that, that had downside follow-through. Look at LVS. I know um, I was thinking at this particular point, maybe, you know, it, it could get better, okay, and then it didn't. So you had a spot to get out of the way of that trade. And then once it broke this, people were talking about a, a real head and shoulders pattern. And you know what? You had one that actually triggered. Here is left shoulder, right shoulder, head, long right shoulder, and then boom, boom. So <laughs> below the 200-day, couldn't get back above it. Not saying stay shorter now, but you know, at least this couldn't rally in August while the market went to new highs. So at least it followed the rules and gave some short guys or guys who wanted to be short. You could trade short trading as a trader. <laughs> People can't make money that way. I tend not to do well there, but at least find stocks that are trading relatively weak, below moving averages, and you go after them. LVS, Wynn did the same thing. You know, Wynn um, looked like it was going to break out here. I actually tried trading along and then came right back in and failed. Haven't touched it since, came back down. Did not rally in August like the market, so what does it do? It breaks below, and now you just have to be careful or avoid. Um, I, I think this Chevron um, tried to trade above. I remember talking about this as a catch-up trade, okay, and it, it did nudge above, but did it pierce this wide range bar? Did it get through the moving averages with force? No, so now it's back to an avoid. Um, Let's see, what, what did XOM do today? Wow, XOM's been weak. You look at it just on a chart, right? It broke here, you have a wide range bar, couldn't take back more than half of it, so this is still in control, and now it's hovering on the 200 day, so you gotta be careful here if uh, you're trying to be long XOM. Looks like this would be uh, you know, a bear flag. Here's your pole, here's your flag, could continue to the downside, so be careful long. And if you're looking for a short, if it shows relative weakness in the next few days and breaks below 97.90, there you go, try and be short that. Some things to be short, some things to be long. So in closing, I still have my spider hedge on. I'm net long though. A lot of stocks that I'm in, I'm all in for a reason. I'm not just throwing darts at the wall and I'm using a tier system to try and take advantage of the chart pattern. So when they're tight and they expand, I could add. When they go up two, three days, I could sell some and stay with some. And these are all things we try and do as professional traders. Sometimes it's more conducive, sometimes it's frustrating. You know, you gotta just, um, use your feet and move them quick when, when, that's con when the market's conducive for that. And right now, if you're rolling up shorts in the actual market, you got to be a little careful, but you also got to be a little careful if you're chasing after 100 point moves. So that's why stock selection is key, your sizing is key, and just keep taking trades and keep getting you know, green days. And then if you feel better, they'll start adding up and you'll start putting together you know, better weeks and months. Hope you had a great first day in September. Got to run. Kids' first day of kindergarten. Birthday, got him a big soccer net, so I want to see a, the smile on his face. And draft days tonight. Have a good one. See you tomorrow morning with Brittany.